In today's video, I am going to go over my heat transfer course plan and I am going to summarize what are the topics that we need to learn to develop a basic understanding of heat transfer. And if you go over all these topics carefully and solve enough problems, you are going to have the necessary background for undergraduate and graduate level study of heat transfer if you are pursuing a degree in mechanical or chemical engineering. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. The heat transfer course essentially discusses the heat transfer modes. So there are different mechanisms of how heat is transferred. And of these mechanisms, we have conduction where you have heat transfer from uh, different materials due to lattice vibration. Then we have convection where you have heat transfer due to bulk motion of the fluid. And you have radiation where heat transfer occurs uh, without any medium through electromagnetic radiation and in these topics we also are going to go through some simplified models or basic models such as Fourier's law for conduction and Fourier's law also gives us uh, different concepts such as thermal conductivity which quantifies how a material conducts heat through itself that is if a material is more conductive thermally then it's going to have a higher thermal conductivity value and we're going to go over each of this topic uh, in its individual videos or separate videos and for convection we are going to learn Newton's law of cooling which is a very simple law that helps us uh, tackle very difficult problems without uh, going into the details and the most important uh, topic there would be uh, the heat transfer coefficient and the heat transfer coefficient actually helps us solve so many problems very easily because it's, it sort of takes into account the bulk effect of the mo motion of the fluid and the conductive properties of, of the material that uh, transfers heat to the fluid or vice versa when the fluid transfers heat to the solid. So the heat transfer coefficient is a very important topic. For radiation we obviously have Wien's displacement law which is a very fundamental law and to quantify heat transfer by radiation we have Stefan Boltzmann's law and these three laws Fourier's law, Newton's law of cooling and Stefan Boltzmann's law uh, they are sort of uh, applicable for steady state heat transfer problems and they help us solve many engineering problems uh, very rapidly. So it's very important to develop an understanding of these concepts. After that we are going to look at one of the fundamental concepts in engineering especially for solving fluid flow and heat transfer problem. Uh, it's control volume and energy balance. So we are going to learn what is the control volume, what are uh, the control surfaces, uh, what are the fluxes and we are going to tackle the uh, how we can use conservative uh, property of energy that is energy is conserved so the first law of thermodynamics and how we can apply it in control volume so that's another important topic we are going to learn after that uh, we are going to use both Fourier's law and control volume to develop the heat conduction and diffusion equation and we are going to develop it for cylindrical sphere and for rectangular uh, Cartesian coordinates or rectilinear coordinates so and we're going to see a lot of applications of heat conduction or diffusion equation after that we are going to learn another concept that is called thermal resistance network and the thermal resistance network helps us solve many steady state problem we're going to learn the expressions for plane wall and we learn the expression for cylinder for a sphere these are common shapes, very regular shapes, so we can develop a mathematical formula very easily for them using thermal resistance network too. After that, we are going to learn about heat sinks and the equation of fin and its associated boundary conditions. So, fins are extended surfaces. If you have more heat transfer area or more area available for heat transfer, you increase the heat transfer, and we can see it from Fourier's law. So, the more area you have, generally it's, it's beneficial for you in terms of the amount of heat transfer and we are going to 
learn how we can uh, uh, take that into our advantage even when we learn about extended surfaces or uh, fins. After that, there is a very important topic. It's called shape factors, and essentially the shape factor uh, is used for 2D or uh, 3D heat conduction or heat transfer problems. So the idea is uh, for a bit irregular shaped solid objects, such as you take a you take a solid box, except that it has a hole inside it, and for this one. Actually, we can solve the heat conduction equation or heat diffusion equation and develop its own uh, thermal resistance model or its own heat transfer formula by itself. So, if we, there are some terms called shape factors, and if we know them, we can use those factors from a table or uh, from a book. You can learn them and use those common factors to very quickly solve heat transfer problems like this, where you have some regular shapes but with a hole inside them or slots inside them and the reason we use shape factors because if you do not want to use them then you have to write the heat conduction equation and solve it with its associated boundary conditions and you also have to uh, sort of go do it over and over again uh, for different shapes so for different slots so it's much better to develop a mathematical formula for, for a particular shape such as this rectangular solid with a rectangular slot in it and use it uh, uh, for your future uh, engineering problems so after that we have transient heat conduction so it's very important because in practical uh, problems where we have heat transfer the heat transfer actually occurs uh, over time and we need to know how temperature varies over time so if you have a for example you have a coin uh, this is a very poor impression of a coin but you are heating this up and you know that the temperature of this coin is going to go up and you want to learn the solution that what is the temperature over time so what was the temperature of the coin after you heat it for one second, or what is the temperature of the coin after you have heated it for uh, five seconds. So it's very important to learn the transient heat conduction uh, 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 model or models. And there is a very simple model which is very favorite one for engineers. It's called the lumped capacitance problems. So essentially, the idea is instead of looking into the details of the problem we are going to look into a sort of a bulk uh, approach we are going to take a bulk approach to the problem so for example you have a large wall and you are heating it up from one side so what's going to happen this wall is going to heat up from this side so the temperature is going to increase and it's going to slowly propagate and increase the temperature of this whole wall but for example if you have a smaller object such as this coin and this coin is going to heat up very quickly and interestingly inside the coin where I'm drawing these blue dots the temperature change would be the same as the temperature change that is happening outside so this object if, because it's so small it's going to get the heat very quickly throughout its, uh, uh, its volume so essentially you, instead of looking at uh, this problem at every single point and looking at the internal temperature gradients we're going to say yeah it's a lumped problem and we are going to treat it as a single object where it's it's taking the heat entirely so it's internally there is the temperature gradients are uh, we are not going to take them into consideration but when it's a wall we are going we, we are going to have to take into consideration yeah what's the temperature gradient inside and over time we will notice yes the temperature gradient close to the source of the heat is much higher compared to what is far away from the wall or what the source of the heat after that we are going to look at uh, semi-infinite solid so essentially this is an idealization of a problem because we do not encounter infinite solids but 
if we make some assumption it helps us solve a lot of a transfer problem for example if you have a, a pipe buried in inside a soil or in underground and you are flowing water through it and if you're going to heat it up uh, then the the soil is also going to be heated but the problem is because the soil of the ground it has much higher thickness so essentially you can treat it as an infinite solid so we are going to look at this type of a transfer problem when we uh, study semi-infinite solid after that we have thermal penetration depth so just a few moments ago i was talking about how uh, it takes some time for heat to penetrate through a material like i'm showing with the green color so whatever the amount heat has penetrated through the material so for example I, under certain assumptions of course we are going to see that uh, for a particular heat transfer problem what is the thermal penetration dip how much heat has penetrated through the material over time then we are going to learn another fundamental topic both uh, fluid mechanics and heat transfer is called similarity solution so we use this technique it's called the similarity variable we introduce a similarity variable when we want to a sort of reduce the dimensionality of the problem or when we have some particular insights into a heat transfer of fluid flow problems for example if you have uh, two variables for example time and distance say for example x inside the material and you can use a similarity variable to combine both of them x and t and for example this similarity variable say i use a sigma so actually sigma would be some kind of form of x over t times a constant or something and you are going to use this similarity variable instead of using x and t and that's going to reduce one of the variables which is very advantageous when you are solving uh, differential equations so we're going to see this uh, similarity solution topic after that there is obviously numerical methods so in practical engineering problems this is more often used because in real world objects we uh, do not have regular shape objects such as uh, cylinders or spheres or uh, rectangular shaped objects so we are probably going to encounter irregular shape objects such as say for example this and unless you use numerical methods we will not be able to get a good solution we will probably get a solution if we use our idealized models but it's not going to represent a reality so we have to use numerical methods and this topic we can go as deep as we want and you can actually have an entirely separate secret undergrad course on numerical methods or graduate level course on numerical methods so so we are going to go uh, sort of take an introductory look into numerical methods and we are going to only look at problems that would help us in terms of solving heat transfer problems so after this hopefully we are going to uh, study heat convection in much more detail so heat convection is actually combined heat transfer and fluid flow problem so we are going to learn a bit of fluid mechanics so we are going to learn about boundary layer equation and displacement thickness or thermal boundary layer thickness we are going to go over all that we are going to learn about natural convection so when the fluid flow occurs to density difference so naturally or we are going to learn about forced convection when you have an external uh, mechanism such as a fan that is blowing air uh, over something for it to cool and this is called a forced convection because essentially you are forcing the fluid to flow over a material to cool it down so we are going to learn about these topics and this is also a very practical topic so for example if you are uh, designing a car in modern days or if it's especially if it's a racing car such as a formula one car then it's going to uh, go over the ground and it's going to most of the time stay close to the ground this uh, car and because of that when the fluid is flowing it's going to be inside the boundary layer and we need to learn what goes on in there in this boundary layer so unless you know the boundary layer equation and 
in order to solve it and in order to uh, calculate the heat transfer coefficient uh, which would depend on the nature of the fluid flow uh, we are not going to able to design a very good car that has a good aerodynamic performance and it can cost you a lot of fuel efficiency uh, if you are driving at high speed so so this is just one example this is just an example of heat convection uh, problem but there are many examples that we are going to look at when we are going to study heat convection so after this we are going to learn a bit about boiling and condensation and boiling and condensation is essentially applied heat transfer processes so in boiling you are going to uh, heat up a liquid uh, beyond its saturation temperature to make it uh, go from liquid to vapor and in condensation you are going to use a surface or to cool, cool down a fluid from its gaseous state to its uh, liquid state and these are also have many practical examples of boiling and condensation of many practical example uh, applications and we're going to learn about the boiling curve and different types of condensation and also different type of uh, flows that happen inside them inside this mechanism so after this we have radiation we're going to learn about blood bodies we're going to learn about view factors and there are some simple rules so radiation is a very complex topic and you need a good understanding of physics that is associated with it but engineers have developed simple rules and simple techniques that we can use to solve very complex radiation problem especially that has engineering applications very quickly and we need to learn them uh, if we are going to develop our heat transfer skills so there is a big topic that i did not mention here but essentially it's called the dimensionless uh, numbers and essentially we are going to learn about the Nussel number which is a very important number for heat convection then we have Prandtl number we have Rayleigh number, Grassoff number and so on and also you have some other important parameters such as the BO number or the thermal diffusivity and we are going to learn about these uh, topics uh, when they arise uh, from different models such as when you are going to study the heat conduction equation uh, we are going to see that thermal diffusivity alpha would arise uh, naturally and uh, why we need to define it uh, we are going to learn it from that equation so so these are the topics of uh, the basic heat transfer course where uh, we are going to learn uh, so many things and this, this things not only will help us in understanding heat transfer processes but will also uh, give us very useful insights into many problems even without like trying to get, get do a thorough analysis if we learn these basic techniques so for example if you know Fourier's law you already know that if it's a solid block of material and it's very thick it's going to have less, less heat transfer especially if we are operating that solid block under steady state conditions and there are many other examples for example Stefan Boltzmann's law you have even a, a tiny increase in the surface temperature will increase your heat transfer by a lot so we are going to develop these insights when we learn each topic separately so thank you for uh, watching this video if you find it useful uh, please like and subscribe and I am also going to link important videos with playlist at the end of this video as I make them and I make videos every other week so please make sure to check, or check them out thank you very much